Who is the elephant in the room for Western societies? Of course, it's China. It's China. Um, I think it, we all have to look towards China, the superpower. We have to look also in the world of digital technology, especially in the field of artificial intelligence. So we've invited an AI and technology expert to talk about what is next in AI in this country. Please welcome DLD All-Star Kai-Fu Lee, Chairman and CEO of Innovation Ventures and President of the company Artific Artificial Intelligence Institute. The Innovation Ventures manages funds worth $2 billion and to focuses on developing the next generation of Chinese high-tech companies. Kai-Fu first spoke at DLD in 2011 in an interview with DLD All-Star Kara Swisher about the Chinese tech ecosystem. Imagine 10 years ago, he spoke about the Chinese ecosystems. Then he had just left Microsoft to start his own accelerators. And now he's worth um, 2 billion US dollars. Amazing. Haifu's New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestseller, AI Superpowers. We have it here. Wait, I get it. You have to see it. If, and you have not only to see it, you have to read it. Um, discusses the race for the leadership in AI between the US and China. I urgently recommend it to dive into the topic of, of AI and its greater societal impact. Today he will speak about AI and post work world and the post work world, sorry for post work world in a pre recorded video. Let's dive into it and and have a look into our future. Hi, I'm Kai Fu Lee of Sinovation Ventures. It's my pleasure today to talk to you about artificial intelligence, its growth, opportunities, and challenges, given how fast it's grown in the past. We're seeing that AI is making all kinds of headlines. Uh, we're seeing that AI has uh, beaten the best human game players. AI has passed all kinds of exams. Uh, and AI has even been able to generate natural language in surprising uh, intelligence. And finally, AI has conquered a 50-year-old biology grand challenge, protein folding. So how long will this continue? How many of the human capabilities will AI be able to take over? Or will AI and human work with each other symbiotically? Now let's look at the four waves of AI. So we've already seen examples of all four waves. So as I described, AI is, uh, requires a lot of data in order to work well. So naturally, the first wave is the internet wave. That is the Amazon, Alibaba, Google, um, Tencent of the world are able to collect a lot of data and use your internet application using your data and your own clicks as a way to learn to do things. So uh, Amazon will show you more things that you click on uh, and um, it will get better because of it. The second wave is really over businesses that happen to have a lot of data. For example, uh, banks can use it for credit card fraud detection. Insurance company can use it to rate insurance applications. And all of that is trained based on outcome. The third wave is called perception. And we've given examples of computer vision and computer speech. So understanding your environment, the, the ability to hear and, and uh, see and recognize and understand. So that's something um, a lot of uh, AI can do now. The final area is autonomous AI. And we've also seen some examples, robots, autonomous vehicles, smart uh, forklifts and uh, cars and uh, arms. So that will continue to expand further and, and able to really take over a lot of the blue collar work. So you can see that these four waves are really impacting the industries under the four waves and they will mature. The more data, the better they get, and all four waves will improve over the next decade or two and able to do a lot of things for us. So that brings us to a key question, which is as AI becomes more and more powerful, trained by more data, what type of jobs might AI displace? So as we described, AI is going to first displace the repetitive jobs, and that's probably within the next five years then it will replace the more routine jobs. 
and then it will go after the optimizing jobs. Jobs that don't require deep thinking, but just requires checking a radiology uh, picture, an MRI or CT, and determining whether someone has cancer uh, or not. So that would be an optimizing job. What remains safe are jobs that are really complex, um, that require strategy, analytical thinking, reasoning across domains, common sense, and then jobs that are creative, jobs that requires you to come up with new ideas that no one has ever had before. And when we think about the AI taking over some of the jobs and tasks, it's really not just the blue color. Many people think, oh, the factory worker, the assembly line, those will go first. Well, yes, those the jobs are endangered, but the white collar jobs are also potentially endangered. Uh, I gave the example of robotic process automation. You can imagine if an HR department starts using that and it's being used for collecting resumes. And once that works well, some people are replaced. It can go on to do email communication with the candidates. It can set up the interviews. It can coordinate the feedback. It can uh, help facilitate decision making and even do an offer negotiation uh, once it understands a candidate. So as we think about us and our next generations, uh, many of our jobs will be potentially in danger. And, as w and, and also when we think about our children, um, also what are the hopes of their careers? How will they get educated? And if you have a one-year-old, how do you envision their future? And what should they study? And, and how should the future of education be evolved? So to answer these questions, I think we should ask an important new question, which is what AI cannot do. And what I can tell you is that the, the, the AI, there are several things that AI cannot do. AI cannot create, conceptualize, or plan strategically. While AI is very good for optimizing a narrow objective, it's unable to pick out what objective that should be um, or set its own goals or think creatively. So, nor can AI have any common sense or think across complex domains. Um, but the other key thing for us to realize is that AI also cannot feel or interact with empathy and compassion. That's something we believe is innate with human beings. So, a robot trying to take care of an elderly person or making someone feel understood and cared for, that's not likely to be easy to do. And even if AI can kind of fake it, uh, humans are unlikely to accept it. Uh, also, as an additional point, AI cannot yet accomplish complex uh, physical work that requires a high degree of dexterity or very precise hand-eye coordination and deal with unknown and unstructured spaces, especially ones that it hasn't seen before. So putting these there are three dimensions here. Let's put the first two dimensions on the picture. We've seen the x-axis before, going from repetitive tasks all the way to creative tasks. And more to the right are the human, more to the left are uh, for the AI to do. But we also talked about the second dimension, which is about empathy and compassion. So let's add that as a second uh, axis, the y-axis. Uh, the, the lower part would mean uh, there would need to be less of empathy and compassion. Higher would be more empathy and compassion. So we now have divided all the jobs and tasks into four quadrants. On the lower left ones, the low creative and the low compassion, of course, we would expect these to be done gradually by AI. Those are the jobs that we talked about replaced in the first parts of this talk. Those are really the only jobs seriously endangered. If we move to the lower right, these are uh, maybe lower compassion required, but require a high degree of productivity, like a scientist. Well, that's actually an area where there's a great opportunity for human AI symbiosis. On the, on the upper um, left are the most interesting examples because they are not necessarily the most creative jobs, but they require a lot of human touch and compassion and trust uh, between humans and humans. So that's where uh, one could potentially take AI as an analytical engine and really wrap the human warmth around it in these kinds of 
um, applicate in these kinds of jobs. And of course, on the upper right, with high creativity and compassion, that's where humans will excel. So there you have it. It's a blueprint of how humans and AI can and will work together. So while we're seeing increasingly AI can do more and more tasks, there are still many things that only humans can do. So let's move to the last topic. In light of the still significant challenges of AI displacement of jobs, uh, or some would call technologi technologically driven unemployment, what are the solutions for us and for our children? I outlined these in three categories. In order to uh, survive and thrive in the AI economy, I would say we have to relearn, recalibrate, and build a new renaissance. So what that, do I mean by relearn? Relearn is the process for the people who are displaced from routine work to learn work that is not displaceable. So I think vocational schools need to redesign their curricula to consider the fact that auto mechanics are going to be needed less and less. Plumbers may be a little safer, but nurses will be a job that will increase a lot. So this reallocation needs to be made. The second area is recalibrate. I think a lot of jobs uh, will really need to creatively think about how to recalibrate them. Um, we need to make sure all the professionals are not just doing the same job they've been doing, but are able to learn AI-based tools. So that, as we discussed, AI-based scientists should use AI tools. AI-based um, medical scientists should UI use AI-based molecule generation programs. Uh, there will be AI tools being used in uh, all kinds of places for people who are uh, artists, who are writers, and the future doctors will need great AI diagnostic tools. The future of teachers will need to rely on AI for helping each student to, to get a customized education and an entertaining education by having one-on-one -on -one uh, AI to student kind of um, customized teaching. The last opportunity is the most fun. I call that uh, Renaissance because it's really celebrating the human creativity, compassion, and humanity. Just like in the Italian cities that really the merchants funded the Renaissance, AI will create a phenomenal amount of wealth that can fund a new Renaissance. Um, AI will inject interesting flexibility People can perhaps work fewer hours, follow their passion, develop their talents, really go after and become the people they really want to be. And, and um, uh, with more time, I think there will be people who could be part-time artists, sculptors, uh, writers, photographers, and also educators, I think, freed from the drudgery of having to grade homework, which AI will do. Uh, the teachers will be able to unleash their energy to design lessons that encourage curiosity, creative thinking, um, and uh, critical thinking. So lastly, just to conclude, I think we have, we're have we definitely seeing AI making a huge impact in the society. AI will do routine jobs for us, and that means we have to figure out ways to uh, transition people along um, and uh, also make sure that if people are aware, they need to be looking at a new AI era where the most important skills are different than before. So to conclude on this talk, we anticipate AI will dramatically change the world. At first, it looks like AI will take away a lot of jobs and tasks. But when we analyze it, we actually see what AI can and will do is take away the routine jobs. And while even that places significant challenges, and for us to really have to think about the three R's on to over, how to overcome the next 15 to 20 years uh, where routine jobs are being taken away. But if we look a bit beyond that, beyond the 15 and 20 years, I, what we see is that AI will have truly liberated us from having to do routine work and really be able to focus on the exciting, the fun, the passionate things. And these, after all, are the reasons why we came to this earth. Thank you.
Thank you, Kai Fu, for, for this amazing speech. It was visionary, it was urgent, and it was inspirational. Um, audience, I really encourage you to learn about everything you can about AI. I think it's, a, it's like elect electricity in the 20th century. We, we can't stop AI anymore out of our life. So better we learn about it and we inhale everything new about it. So thank you for the educational message you sent to our audience, dear Kai Fu. Hope to see you soon again. Best, Steffi. Ciao.